I'm very proud of my grandparents, and I'm excited to share with you a little bit about them tonight. The story begins here. Italy. My grandpa, or as I call him, Nono, was born here shortly before World War II. It wasn't an easy time for Jews to be living in Italy. His dad, my great-grandpa, was forced out of work because he was Jewish. My grandfather had the foresight to realize that it was not a safe place to be raising a young Jewish boy. Uh, while they were sitting in the park and my father was playing with another little boy, my grandfather was speaking with the mother of the little boy, and she said to him, uh, when are you leaving? And my grandfather said, the 1st of September. And she said, big things are going to happen in Europe on the 1st of September. Uh, you should leave sooner. So eventually he said to her, well, how would you know? And it turned out she was the mistress of the German high consul in Genoa. Uh, my grandfather immediately grabbed my dad, left the park, went to the steamship office, uh, changed the ticket to uh, an earlier one, and they left in August on the de Grasse sister ship, which actually arrived in New York uh, just before the war began. My grandma, or as I call her, Matza, was born here in Sarajevo. Back then, it was still Yugoslavia. My grandma's family barely escaped being captured by the Germans. My grandfather was the son of a rabbi, uh, somebody who had been, he had been friendly with before the war, uh, came to tip him off that uh, he was on the list of the very first Jews to be rounded up. Her brother recalls what happened. Our parents decided very quickly that we had to leave the city, get away from the Germans, and go to the part of Yugoslavia that was then occupied by Italian troops. And we were able to stay in a part occupied by Italians until about December of 1941. The Italians then brought them to Italy and put them under village arrest. When Italy surrendered, we were like sitting ducks in a small village. Everybody knew those were the Yugoslav Jews. We were able, in the middle of the night, to go over the Alps. My mom was separated at that point from all of her family members and put uh, with a, a Swiss woman and her uh, two adult children. After the war, my grandma's family moved back to Italy and lived in a displaced persons camp. They later immigrated to the United States. When we arrived in Los Angeles, we were virtually penniless, and none of us could really speak much English. And the Jewish Family Service rented them their first apartment, gave them a set of uh, used furniture and uh, dishes and uh, flatware, and it gave them a chance to, uh, to start their life over here in America. In the 1950s, my grandpa lived in Boston, and my grandma lived in Los Angeles. The story of how my grandpa and grandma met is pretty remarkable. My dad came out west to uh, start working in the early stages of the space industry. Uh, one of my dad's cousins used to look through the phone book and he would look for people who had names spelled similarly to his family's and then would uh, call them to see if they were related. So he called my grandparents, whose last name was Fincy, F-I-N-C-I. The telephone book came out and we were listed as Fincy's with a Z. So uh, a couple weeks later, he shows up at their doorstep, knocks on the door. And they came to see whether we are relatives or whether there was any way they would know us. And ultimately, they became good friends. So he introduced my parents. And all thanks to the misspelling of my grandfather's uh, name, uh, my mom and my dad met. <laughs> One of the things I always remember is, as busy as my father always was, uh, professionally, he always made time for us. He was always home to have dinner with us. And we were always surrounded by a lot of family. For my parents, family has always been the most important. And there were always cousins and aunts and uncles around. My mom was a phenomenal cook, and she would always prepare uh, family dinner. We'd eat together every night. Quite fond of the souf gagnote that I grew up on. We're a very close family, and. We want to be able to have as much time with each other as possible. Providing their children with Jewish identities was important to them. We always grew up looking forward to the holidays. One of the cute things that uh, I remember uh, one year we went to uh, Purim at a synagogue. My uh, mom made the outfits. She made by hand these outfits and they were unbelievable. My, my sister looked like Queen Esther. I looked like King Hashverosh. And in fact, it was kind of embarrassing because we went to a friend's synagogue. We didn't actually even belong. And my sister won first prize for girls' outfits, and I won first prize for the boys' outfit. 
And in the middle of this, uh, while we're winning our first prizes, my dad had been all evening scribbling on a piece of paper. And in the middle of it, he turns to my mom and he said, I figured it out. I solved the problem, which ultimately became uh, something my, my father was professionally well known for, the Viterbi algorithm. This was all while we were winning our Purim contest. You know, my dad's still very much a professor at heart. He taught for many years at the university, still uh, lectures at a lot of universities. So he's actually very, very active, uh, both professionally and, and uh, in the community. I can't really remember a time since we moved to San Diego that my parents haven't been uh, very uh, active and involved in the community. Um, and it's a way for them to be able to give back for the assistance and the good fortune that my mother had uh, in those years after the war. Uh, even being able, in part, being able to survive uh, during the war because the American Jewish community helped uh, fellow Jews abroad and that's always been really important to my parents, uh, whether it's helping a local community, helping in Israel or wherever. And for my parents, their absolute favorite thing in life is to spend time with their five grandchildren. Uh, if they could do just that, uh, they wouldn't need anything else. That's uh, top on their priority list. The story that began with two people fleeing from persecution, then helping to build the community in their new country by promoting education and Jewish values, and most importantly, raising a loving family, is the story of my grandparents. My grandfather is a very intelligent person. I respect him for that, and he's fun to be around with. A great sense of humor. My grandmother is an excellent cook, and uh, she's a very caring person. They make me have a smile on my face every single time I go over to their house. I'm always really happy to be with them. Yeah, it's great to be with them. Damn, Mama, no, no. We don't see, we don't see.